Today, I'm sharing some fun and new honey and honeybee themed DIYs. Stay tuned. I'm Rebecca Virginia, and I make DIY videos mainly using Dollar Tree and other inexpensive items. This is my dog. Sometimes he helps me craft, but most of the time he tries to eat my crafts. <laughs> Let's get started with the first DIY. We're going to start off this honey and bee themed video with a brand new DIY. So I made a home sweet home honeycomb wood round sign. You could hang it up really anywhere that you want, but I chose to put it on my front door. I got this trio of wood pile wood rounds and I actually found it at my thrift store three for 99 cents, but they do sell these at Hobby Lobby and Walmart. And I just added a quick stain using my Waverly antique stain. And then I'm going to be creating the honeycombs. So I cut out this honeycomb pattern using some Oracle vinyl. It's not my favorite. I've mentioned that before. I would recommend either just using a color vinyl that you don't like, maybe even Dollar Tree vinyl. I'll have to try that out because I did find that whenever I use the Oracle, it tends to bleed through. That might be a user error, but I still got to use it up. I'm almost out of the round, so I'm making my way through it and using it up. And I just placed this down pretty much like a sticker. And then I took my sponge brush from the Dollar Tree and this gorgeous honey color paint from Folk Art and I'm just going in and dabbing the area of course where the honeycombs is going to be and because the stain was a little bit darker I did have to go in with about I believe three layers and then this was the really fun part when it's dried I was able to peel back that stencil vinyl and it was so fun to see the honeycomb pattern that was left. I forgot to hit record on this part, so sorry about that, but I am just creating a black stripe going through the center, kind of more towards the top of our wood round. And that's where I'm going to put the phrase home sweet home that I also cut out of vinyl. I used Dollar Tree ribbon, honeycomb, and this burlap kind. It was really easy. I just placed the honeycomb on top of the burlap. I didn't hot glue it or anything, and I made one of my favorite bows. I have a really in-depth tutorial on how to make this bow using a zip tie. Yeah, so I will link that above if you guys want to check it out, but I know bows are pretty personal. People have their ways of making bows, but if you did want to find out how to make it like this, again, that will be linked above. As a further embellishment, I have one of these wood cutouts from the Dollar Tree. I think this was supposed to be a ladybug, but I painted it to be like a bee and I'm making the bees pattern using a white marker and then I just hot glued down our bee. For the last step to turn this into a hanging sign that I could use on my front door, I grabbed some of the rope that you can usually find in the crafter section or possibly in the decor section. I know mine's up with the ocean and beach stuff right now. And I placed that on the back of our sign. For our next DIY, I am using one of these free honey wands that I got, and I'm going to be making some faux honey. The real stuff is way too sticky, and I would be very scared of attracting different kinds of bugs. So we are, of course, going to DIY our own. I first took one of these honeycombs. I know you could get them at craft stores and on Amazon. Actually, at a restaurant I was at, it came with my tea. I asked them if I could keep it, and they said, yes, it comes with the tea. So I got to keep this honey wand, and I've just kind of had it in my craft stash and been waiting to use it. And I first covered it in a shade called Daybreak by Folk Art. And then this next part was a complete epic fail because I had kind of looked online how to make faux honey. There are a lot of different methods, but I thought the easiest one would be to use some honey colored glue sticks. So I went to Amazon, I checked out these glue sticks. They had amazing reviews, there they are. People who had made similar honey kind of DIYs, and I think Amazon must have sent me the wrong color because as you could see, this was pretty clear. There was a slight yellow tinge, but it was no way the honey shade that I had seen on Amazon. So that was kind of a fail. So I ended up just going in with some darker yellowy orange paint and covering all over where I had put the glue stick after it dried. 
as the last little embellishment on my honey wand, I added a small gingham bow and I just used one of the sticky dots that you can get in the jot section from the Dollar Tree to adhere it. In this compilation, I wanted to include something for more of the non-crafters. So I found this really adorable bee principle. And of course, the best part is that it was free. I will leave a link down below for how you can access this image to print it out. And I did grab a Dollar Tree frame. This is my favorite one. It's this faux wood frame. I absolutely love the way that this frame looks. I've used it in quite a few DIYs. I have just a few of them, AKA like three in my craft room right now. And I did add a little bit of white paint to just distress the frame. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to use a plastic garden sign from the Dollar Tree and some free paint sticks to create this garden sign. This honey image came from the farmer's market calendar, but you could always print one out that you liked or use another image. And we're also going to be using some paint sticks, but I need them to be black, so went ahead and painted those. And what I'm going to be doing is eventually gluing down the paint sticks and the honey sign onto this foam core board, but before I could do that, I had to get some measurements and by measurements i mean i just kind of eyeballed it but i am going to be making a border out of these paint sticks so i spent a little bit of time just placing them down and trying to arrange them in a way that i thought looked nice once i knew the length i wanted my paint sticks i went ahead and took my miter shears i'll link these below i got them off of amazon and i just cut off any of that excess paint stick the length of your paint sticks is going to entirely depend on how large your sign is and I did cut this calendar image down a little bit because I wanted the honey to be centered but just for reference the top two paint sticks I ended up cutting at 9 inches and then the two paint sticks that are on the sides were 10 inches and about a quarter. Before I glue all of this down I'm going to be painting the foam core board black. There are lines in the back of the calendar image. It's a gorgeous calendar, but the pages are pretty thin and I don't want those lines to shine through. So a really easy way is to just paint it black and then you won't see any of the black calendar lines. I use spray adhesive to adhere down my honey calendar image. And then I have this really fun tool that I got from Plaid. They own Mod Podge. So it's a tool from Mod Podge owned by Plaid. And it's like this little rolling pin and it's so nice because I used to use an old gift card to get out any of the air bubbles, but this little rolling pin was really fun to use and it worked great, no air bubbles. And of course, you could do this entire DIY using a wood sign instead of the foam core board, but I do that a lot using the wood sign, so I wanted to show you all a different option. And also, this is a lot lighter than a piece of wood. It's light foam core board, so it is more likely to stand up on its own. Once the hot glue was dry, I just took a box cutter to cut out my sign and pop it out of the foam core board. The top and bottom cut really smooth, but the edges I had a little bit of trouble with, so I just went ahead and trimmed off any of the foam core board that didn't get cut nice and smooth with the box cutter. And then I took some black paint and a small foam paintbrush and painted all along the sides, and I also painted the entire back of the sign in the same black color. I wanted my sign to have some iron details, but of course real iron would have been way too heavy for a foam core board sign. So instead I took this plastic garden fence that I found at the Dollar Tree and my miter shears that I had used earlier also, and I just cut out these little swirl details in the plastic fence. I cut out two of these, one to use on the top of the sign and one to use on the bottom of our sign. Then I just applied some hot glue and placed it on the top. I did have to hold it in place for about a minute and to make sure that it was extra secure, I did take some hot glue and apply it to the back of our faux iron as well. Lastly, to make this into a sign that we can actually stake into the ground, I took a very large, I believe they're intended for s'mores, a s'more stick and hot glued it to the back of the sign. They are also found at the Dollar Tree. Because I had to use quite a bit of hot glue on the back of the sign, I just took a little sponge brush and some black paint and went over where those faux wrought iron swirls were. 
The next honey inspired DIY is a honeycomb vase. I'm going to be using chicken wire that I found at my Dollar Tree in this DIY, but I know that this is a harder to find item, but don't worry, you can still do this DIY. I would suggest using the clear sink mats that are found in the kitchen section, or you can also use one of the rubber grippies that go under mats. They're like a mat, but the rubbery ones that are found in the home goods section of the Dollar Tree. Both of those when painted and styled also look like chicken wire. The good thing about using those too is that they wouldn't poke you like this chicken wire was doing to me. And all that I'm doing is wrapping the chicken wire around this Dollar Tree vase. And then at the top, I just tucked the chicken wire down into our glass vase. The idea behind this DIY is I wanted to turn the vase into something that resembled a beehive or a honeycomb. So I know that I could have gone in with orange or a yellow paint to kind of make that point more obvious. But I also wanted this to match the decor in my home right now so that I could actually use it. So I decided to paint it entirely white using my Waverly paint in white. I'm going to end up using sunflowers in this vase, but I also think it would be so pretty if you put in a LED candle and then it would glow with a yellow orangey color through the vase. And like most of my DIYs, I can't just leave it white. I have to go in with my stippling brush from the Crafter Square section of the Dollar Tree and some brown paint, and then I just dry brushed it onto my vase, creating a nice distressed look. There's a couple different options for what you can use on the next part of this project. Some of this nautical rope cotton or nautical rope jute would work really well, but an even cheaper option, because you get lots of pieces of rope for only a dollar, is taking one of the mop heads from the Dollar Tree. And I really liked it because it was a softer texture to work with, so it really laid flat and was very pliable. So I just tied it once around our glass jar, and then I went in with one other piece, but I didn't want this piece to be hanging down the front, so I just cut it in the back and hot glued it down. Next, I took a piece of jute and I tied it around our honeycomb vase in between the two mop strands. And this jute is going to be holding up our little bumblebee wood laser cutout. I thought these laser cutouts were so cute, but I couldn't tell if this one was supposed to be a bumblebee or a ladybug or just an insect. So that's why I went ahead and painted it so that it looked more like a bumblebee. But I also really love just the plain wood. I wasn't sure which one to use. I thought the bright colors popped a little bit more for this video and pictures but personally, I really liked just the plain wood laser cutout. Also, the ends of the mop were fraying and I thought it looked just a little bit messy, so I did take a lighter and I just burned the ends so that they wouldn't fray. I did go ahead and do this outside. I lived in an apartment building and was a little scared I might set off a smoke detector or something, so I did that off camera. I wanted to bring in those warm honey tones, so I decided to go with some sunflowers from the Dollar Tree. But like I said earlier, I think it'd be really beautiful to put in an LED candle and then it would shine a yellow honey color at night. The next project is a faux book stack with a honey theme. To start off this DIY, I'm going to paint my wood crate yellow. I didn't do anything special here, so I didn't think it was necessary to show you all. I just painted the wood crate from the Dollar Tree yellow. Now to transfer on our honeycomb, I'm using the graphite method. I just Google searched honeycombs on Google, printed out a sheet of honeycombs. Then I took a pencil and scratched it on the back. Then I placed this onto the top of our crate and with a pen, I just pressed down along those lines and the graphite remains. I did a really in-depth tutorial on how to do this method of transferring in one of my Christmas videos, so I will link that above if you needed some more instructions on how to do this. Then I found these gorgeous bee printables. They were completely free and I will link them below. And I loved the way this bee looked and I wanted him to go onto the front of my book stack or wood crate from the Dollar Tree. And I just put a little bit of Mod Podge over him so that he would stay in place. And I liked them so much that I also cut out a smaller one and put it in the top left corner of my wood crate. I actually didn't mind the way that the transfer came out, but I still wanted it to pop a little bit more, 
So I went over my honeycomb tracings with a gold pen from the crafter square section of the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be writing words on each of my books and the Dollar Tree has great options. You can use a stencil or one of their many rub-on transfers, but the Dollar Tree also recently started carrying vinyl and I had to try it out. So I did use my Cricut and some vinyl to write Sweet Like Honey. And of course, it would not be a farmhouse tutorial if there wasn't some distressing involved. So I took a little bit of my Waverly white chalk paint and just went over the entire DIY. I'm not sure who is the original creator or whoever figured out first that if you flip the Dollar Tree crates over, it looks like three books stacked on top of each other. But whoever did, I absolutely love this idea. I think it comes out so cute looking like a stack of books. So of course, to hold my stack of books together, I had to use some jute. And I also really liked these sprigs of greenery, also from the Dollar Tree, just added on top of our book stack. This is the first time I've created a faux book stack. Let me know in the comments down below if you knew about this hack using one of the Dollar Tree wood crates. Next is a quick and easy DIY that not only looks great in your garden, but also helps out the environment. Next up, we're going to make a bee bath. I saw this candle warmer at the Dollar Tree and thought the coloring and the shape was too perfect not to use for my bee bath. So I'm just taking some of this nautical rope that I found near the crafter square section, kind of where they keep the faux florals, and I wrapped it around twice around the candle warmer to hide the holes. Then I'm going to be using a decal that I made, which says be our guest, but you can add in any lettering or image that you like. If you're unfamiliar with what a bee bath is, it's really cute and I learned about it recently. And basically it's an area for bees to drink some water. Bees need lots of water throughout their day, not only to make honey, but also keep the hives nice and cool and many other reasons that you could also look up. But basically we're gonna be putting some rocks in the top of our bee bath. You don't want to submerge the rocks in the water. You want them to be poking up a bit because we don't want our bees to fall in the water. We want to have the rocks poking out so that the bees can perch on top of the rock and then dip down and have some nice water to drink. This DIY would go perfect in any fairy garden that you're creating this spring and summer. I couldn't pass up on these honeycomb magnets from Jot at the Dollar Tree and knew exactly what I was going to make with it. I am taking this wood shadow box from the Dollar Tree and I totally forgot that I had seen other people do DIYs on this and say it's impossible to take apart and that is totally true. I could not take this apart so usually I would just take the backing off and then apply the scrapbooking paper down but for this one I kind of had to just put it inside of the box without being able to take it off. So I took this paper, it's kind of like a lavender lilac color and I cut it to size and then the little wood block in the center, I also could not get out. I even used pliers and couldn't get it out. So I just had it to kind of cut around it and I'm gonna end up putting that feels like home sign back on it just with a different saying. So that'll be covered the little bits around the wood block that you can see through. I flipped the little sign over and decided to paint it white. I'm gonna end up going in with some honeycomb looking materials that I'll show you in just a moment. But before I could do that, I needed a fresh base. So I just took my Waverly chalk paint in the color white and painted our entire small sign. Then to re-adhere the sign onto the block, I just took my hot glue gun and pressed that down onto it. So I had seen Lemon Avenue do this. I will link her Instagram down below. She does such beautiful crafts. And I saw that she took these wood magnets from the Dollar Tree and made a honey bee sign with them. And that is such an amazing idea because they do look exactly like honeycombs. So I'm placing those down on the center. I'll glue them down in just a bit. But first in the bottom left corner of my wood sign, I wanted to make almost like a little beehive. So I am taking some raffia and just twirling it around my fingers to make a little hive. And again, with the raffia, I wanted to have a nice long bow up at the top, so I'm just making a bow out of it and then adding a bit of hot glue and putting it in the top right corner. 
Then to really make this bee themed, I brought out my little Cricut Joy. I absolutely love using my Cricut Joy when I just want to do a really fast final project and don't want to bring out my whole Explore or Maker machine. I thought these came out so cute and I am just burnishing them onto my transfer tape and then burnishing them down onto the paper. As a final embellishment, I would have loved if I could have put a little bee in the hive, but it wouldn't really work with vinyl, so I decided to just add a little flower off of one of the floral picks that I got from the Dollar Tree. I've seen lots of different beehives floating around YouTube and Pinterest, so I had to try my own and I actually made it from a K-cup. For this next DIY, I am making a beehive out of a K-cup. Yes, a little K-cup. You can even use a used one. I had a massive pack that I got from Costco and instead of taking it apart and removing the coffee grounds, I just thought I was going to leave it sealed. But if you really want to be um, not wasteful, you can use a used one. You would just have to empty out all of those coffee grounds. And this is some nautical rope that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to be taking the rope and the hot glue and going all around the K-cup again and again and again until I get to the very top. Once I wrapped the jute and the hot glue all the way around the K-cup, I wanted to add a little hanger on the beehive, so I just took some more of that nautical rope and made a loop on the back of our hive. And it's definitely starting to look like a beehive, but to really drive the beehive point home, I took another piece of nautical rope and made a circle on the front of our hive, and that's going to act as the entrance to our beehive. Then I took a paintbrush and a bit of black paint and just painted the inside of our beehive entrance to add a bit of depth to it. I really wanted to put some little bees on my hive, but I didn't have any bee beads and I didn't want to buy any off of Amazon or at the craft store, so I decided to make my own. And for our bees wings, I am actually taking some of this, I think it's called floral cord, from the Dollar Tree. This is from back during Valentine's Day, but they come out with it every season. They come out with one for Christmas, Halloween. I've seen them in all sorts of different colors. So I am just taking some yellow paint and I'm painting these yellow. Again, these are going to be the wings of our bumblebee. For the body of our bumblebee, if you had a black bead or even just a really tiny bead that you could paint black, that would work perfect. I didn't have any, so I took some white sequins and painted it black. Looking back, I would suggest not painting your sequins because I end up going in with just like a Sharpie marker and I think that's a lot less messy than using the black paint. I'll show you in just a second. But I end up putting two bumblebees on my hive. I just took some hot glue and hot glued down my painted sequins and then added the wings, again using just hot glue. And the wings cut really easily off the garland. I just cut it off with my little scissors and hot glued it on. And there were some places where the sequins had kind of gotten rubbed off since I used the tweezers to pick up the sequins. So I ended up having to go back in with a black marker. So this is why I would say just hot glue the sequins on whatever color it is and then go in with a black marker or a paint pen. I did the same thing, adding another little bumblebee and also added a, a little bit of florals at the top and a small gingham ribbon. I absolutely love how this DIY came out and I think it's the perfect size to fit on a tiered tray. I couldn't have a honey themed video without trying my hand at making a honey pot. I got these gorgeous graphics from Cricut Design Space. The whole DIY that sprouted this honeybee or bumblebee themed video was that I wanted to make a little honey pot. So I bought this America the Beautiful mason jar. I think this was supposed to be a wind chime at the Dollar Tree during the 4th of July season. And all that I did was flip it over and there was some printed writing that would have shown through if I painted the yellow directly over it. So I just took some white paint basically to prime it and then for the lid of my mason jar I wanted it to look metal so I'm taking the shade Elephant by Waverly and just freehand painting the top of our mason jar. Then to paint my actual honey pot I am taking the shade Moonflower by Folk Art. It's a really perfect honey colored 
color and I am painting our mason jar which I'm now turning into a honey pot. To add a little bit of definition to the lid of our honey pot, I just took a black marker and added in some lines to make it a little bit more dimensional. I also wanted to incorporate this gingham ribbon again. So I am folding it in half so it's a little bit thinner and then wrapping it around the mason jar and just hot gluing it to the back of our sign. And I probably wouldn't have added the jute ribbon if it weren't for the hole in the top of it, but I actually really like the way that it came out. And I again took my black marker and just added a little bit of contouring to our honey pot. Then I used my Cricut to cut out this really cute honey decal. I found this on Cricut Design Space. They have so many adorable honey and bee themed ones. If you're not too into the honey or bee trends, I also think this would make a really cute strawberry jam jar. Next up, I used an unlikely toy from the children's section of the Dollar Tree to make this adorable home sweet home piece of decor. I really wanted to make a mini wood round for this minis challenge video, but I could not find anything that was small enough and round at the Dollar Tree. And then I went in the toy section and I saw this little dollhouse table and I thought, okay, I think this might be the best I'm going to get. And I was really surprised. I thought it was plastic when I bought it, but it's actually wood, which is really nice for only a dollar to have like paint your own customizable dollhouse furniture. So I broke off two of the legs, but I left two. So it's like a kickstand for our wood round. And then I painted the top half with a brown stain and the bottom half in that yellow moonflower color again by Folk Art. And I wanted it to have a black stripe down the center, kind of reminiscent of a bumblebee. So I took some painter's tape and taped it off and then my black paint and I painted a black stripe going through the center of our soon to be wood round. To make it even more honey themed, I decided to put some honeycombs onto the wood round. And to do this, I am taking chicken wire that I got at the Dollar Tree. I always find this in the gardening section and if you do find it, definitely pick it up because I know it's kind of rare to spot. I've seen it a couple times in my Dollar Tree, but it sells out pretty quickly. And that tool that I was using to cut the chicken wire is actually the dog nail trimmers that you can find in the pet section at the Dollar Tree. Works really great for cutting. So I use that tool to cut out the chicken wire so it looks more like honeycombs than chicken wire. And I'm just placing and hot gluing this on the bottom yellow section of our wood round. Next, I am going to be taking some vinyl and my Cricut Joy and cutting out Home Sweet Home. As the final embellishment on our wood round, I took these laser cutouts from the Dollar Tree and painted it into a bumblebee, and then I just hot glued it into the corner of our wood round. If you see any of the children's wood dollhouse furniture at your Dollar Tree, definitely pick it up because there's lots of things that you can make with them. Next is a watering can DIY with a subtle bee hint that I think would look perfect on any tiered tray. I purchased this kit from Liz Moore Decal and Decor. She has an amazing wood cutouts website and I thought this one was really cute and I love bead barland so I went ahead and purchased it. And I just split up the wood beads, half of them I'm going to leave natural and half of them I put into this plastic baggie with some drops of dark brown stain and I'm just kind of squishing and shaking the beads around in the stain to get them a nice dark brown color. With my beads stained that dark brown color, I am now moving on to the watering can and I'm going to be painting this yellow. I started off with a light yellow shade called Daybreak from Folk Art, but I wanted it to be a little bit more honey colored. So then I went in with the shade Moonflower also from Folk Art and just kind of went over that, darkening up the watering can a bit. Besides the color, I wanted to add another bee element, so I used my Cricut to cut out a small black bee decal, and I went ahead and burnished that onto my transfer tape and transferred it on to the bottom left corner of our watering can. Now I'm going to show you how to make the actual garland part. So now that my beads are all dried, I'm just threading those on with dark brown and the natural, dark brown and the natural. 
And once I had all of those threaded, I'm going to work on making the tail of the garland. I just took the jute and wrapped it around my hand. And then when I peeled it off, I threaded through the end of our bead garland and just tied that in a knot, leaving a tail because we're gonna use that in a little bit. Then I took another piece of jute, a totally freestanding one, and I just wrapped that around our garland a bunch of times. And after I had it all the way threaded around as much as I wanted, I used the tail from earlier and the end of the one that we just spun around and I tied that into a knot. If you need more in-depth instructions, there are like 10 minute long videos on how to make bead garlands. So I would just go ahead and YouTube that if mine was a little too fast for you. Then I just cut off the end of our jute and trimmed it down into the length that I wanted. And with our other end, I am just going to knot that and tie it around the handle of the watering can. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.